Hi guys, I'm down at Harcourt Lakes in the Cotswold Water Park near uh, Fairford Air Base where the American Air Force is based. You can hear the jets taking off now and again I guess, uh, or you will do during this film I think. We're here for 48 hours and uh, I fished here once before, last week actually, and uh, we're just coming into spring and uh, I'm going to show you how I approach a typical day ticket water. This has got a reasonable head of fish in and uh, I noticed some absolute stunners in here and I thought even though it's a fair distance from where I live, I like this part of the country and I like the stamp of fish they've got around here. You know, there's a lot of scaly ones and uh, I just thought, you know what, that's a nice challenge. So I'm going to do my own fishing and uh, just show you everything I get up to in the next 48 hours and I'll keep you posted so let's see how it goes. Yeah typically uh, it's it's been raining again since we got here at 8 o'clock this morning well that's when the gates open by the way you can pre-book to fish this place at Harcourt and uh, it opens at 8 the gates you can get a quad round by the way to set your gear around so you don't always need a wheel but I just thought I'd, uh, I'd add that Anyway, uh, what I did, I weighed up where I should fish. I mean, I wanted to just walk around and have a good look, but I stood in the car park and uh, it isn't what you think as well. Before you think I'm a lazy so-and-so, uh, I very rarely just plonk in the car park, especially when you've got a quad to take around the lake so you don't have to handball it around. I could have fished anywhere I wanted. So I stood in the, this car park swim I was looking out and I seen five or six fish and I thought that'll do for me, you know. And it's a, it's a nice swim, I've got a big panoramic view of the lake. So the obvious thing to do was to start on zigs, because last time I was here, zigs seemed to rule the roost. A typical early spring thing. And a lot of the fish are up in the upper layers, as we know. So uh, I tried fishing on the bottom last time I was here and I just had tench, so it told me the carp weren't actually feeding on the bottom uh, when I got near them. So six was the starting point. So I, I put one, it's about six feet deep out, out there where I'm fishing. So I did one at uh, five foot, one at four and one at uh, two and three quarters. Uh, mostly with black foam on. Uh, I used a different zipper on them. And uh, bang them out. And uh, I actually cynically brought one of these uh, additives that I put on a zig. And sometimes I like using them plain, but other times I'll actually flavour them. And I really fancied this thing. It was something that I'd last used a few years ago now, and it was super successful. You know, when you, you, you suddenly think, why did I stop using that? So I found a tub of it in one of my old uh, rucksacks in the garage. So I brought it with me and uh, I thought, Do you know what? I'm going to dip it in that and try this. And uh, I was just telling Joe, uh, my camera guy that's come down with us that this stuff is absolutely brilliant so I blarted that one out and it was only in probably I don't know, 20 minutes and that one went and uh, absolute belting run so I thought wow that's that's a bit of a result getting a bite so quick anyway there's quite a lot of weed in here at the moment and uh, it went smashing through I don't know about 40 or 50 yards and it was a real solid decent fish that I think Put the brakes on it eventually, unplugged it from the weed, it found a few more weed beds and then I had hook pull unfortunately, so I lost it. So, But it's a good start and then uh, two swims down, there's a young guy, he's just had a sort of 15 pound common on a zig as well, so it bodes well for uh, the rest of the session. So I've got another, you know, best part of 48 hours to try and get a result here so I'll, I'll keep you posted and then uh, I'll show you some of the more intricate things that I've been doing along the way and tonight I, I'm trying to decide whether there's a fish on the bottom I might well switch over to the uh, the mix I've got and I've got some maggot sweet corn uh, eight mil boilies and uh, two mil three mil and four mil pellets and uh, a lot of liquids in them so I might well switch over to that yet but I've got to decide if I get another run on a zig I'll probably stick with the zigs because you know it's too much to ignore that but one random bite I don't know I still think I could get bites on the bottom so we'll keep you posted anyhow and then I'll see you in a bit and then we'll go into some detail.
Okay, uh, as, I, as I said earlier, uh, I'm going to change attack tonight. I'm going to go for uh, fishing on the bottom and I'll probably leave one rod on the zig and uh, I'm going to take the two shorter zigs off where I was fishing at a shorter distance from the bottom. The uh, sort of two and a half foot and three foot ones, get rid of them. Keep the one at about four and a half foot or nearly five foot it was actually. Keep that one out. Uh, I found zigs to be pretty effective at night as well, you know, a lot of people kind of wind them in in the dark and I've had English 40s in the dark on zigs so, and, and plenty of 30s so, you know, it's always worth leaving them out in, in the dark if you think that they're going to work. Anyway, I'm a bit unsure at the moment despite having that bite so I'm probably going to go with my gut feeling and fish on the bottom with a couple of rods. I'm going to use these uh, maggot rigs, 20 maggots on a slip D size five hook, curve hook. You notice I've got a couple of big shots on these here. That's so that before they even feel the lead, it's dragging it into the floor of the cart's mouth. I think it's quite important that it's not just to keep the coated hook length on the bottom. And uh, another point of interest is I don't use a pop-up or a boilie underneath the maggots. I just use a piece of either yellow or red foam or black foam, it doesn't matter it's out of sight it's underneath the maggots and I just find it balances the thing better I mean a lot of people put a boilie in underneath the maggots because they're with the boilie company and they just want to support the boilie uh, maker that they're with uh, I'm not into all that kind of carry on so that's that that's what I use and I've had tons of fish on it and uh, so I'll be sticking two of those out I've made a spare up so I've always got a spare in the middle of the night in case I get a bite. Always worth doing because you don't want to be buggering around in the dark trying to put a maggot rig together. So always knock a few spares up, at least one. And the mix I'm going to put in is some maggot. I brought a gallon of maggot with me just in case. And you know, when you when you weigh up the gallon of maggots is you know 20 odd quid, 22 quid. It's not that expensive. A couple of bags of boilies would cost you that and I've caught a damn sight more fish on maggots than I have on a lot of boilies, let me put it that way, certainly when it's colder. Anyway, what I do, I don't just put the maggot in, I use other bait as feed. In case you've got silvers and nuisance fish that start cleaning the maggot out, I like a little bit of uh, food in there besides. So I've got this mixture here, which is a lot of pellet, a lot of pellet base. There's some eight mil boilies, which I get off my mate, uh, Mick Ball. Them are beautiful. They almost look like a maple pea and they're eight millies and uh, they've been very effective over this last winter. I've got sweet corn in because I want a bit of flash of colour. I've got three mill pellets, twos and ones in there. And uh, I've also, I made some tuna sandwiches this morning. So I used all the oil from three cans of tuna. I put that in. I found that to be a brilliant additive. I've used it for years. I've also got uh, LO30, which is a, uh, uh, something that you don't ever hear about anymore you can't get it anymore but I've got it from a friend of mine in Norway that manages to uh, get his hands on it because he, he works at the fish plant or does maintenance for him so I can get that stuff and it's like a cart magnet so I've got quite a lot of that in here and uh, I wish we had smelly vision because it does smell really fishy and strong and it's quite a heavy ingredient it sinks to the bottom but it gives off a huge smell and uh, so I'm going to be using that 50-50 with a maggot and spawn them out. I'll probably put about 25 spawns in for two rods and that's the plan of attack. I'm going to use mesh bags of maggots on the slip D's, uh, five ounce leads, I like heavy leads, especially with crosswinds and uh, you know when I want to punch through the air and get to the spot easier. It's no good messing around with threes and stuff like that. You get more accurate if you've got a heavy lead on and you're punching through the crosswind. And also it's the bolt effect. I like the effect of the heavier lead on the way it hooks the fish rather than let them spit it out and shake the lead out. So I always tend to use heavier leads or conversely I'll go very light and use a one ounce lead if I'm fishing a bit closer. But anything but using the standard three ounce lead because it's so predictable and I just think the fish can deal with it easier. So yeah, that's the plan of attack for later. and. Uh, I'll show you more when I'm spawning and uh, we'll go back to it and I'll show you everything. Just the way I use the PVA mash, uh, mesh bags on the rig is interesting as well. I've come up with this way of doing a quick attachment and it leaves no residual PVA mesh 
on the hook itself and it, I just form a loop basically before I make the bag an overhand knot and you can put it on the, on the hook in seconds and you can really thump it and because it's not hooked through the mesh it breaks down in about 30 seconds so I'll catch you in a bit. I had a, a night of torrential rain. It probably rained for a good 10 hours solid, I think. Uh, I even had to zip the front up of the bivy so that there was a, a minute letterbox kind of slip like this. And I was still getting soaked through that. It was hammering straight in our faces. I was going to fish on the bottom and use the maggots and uh, eight mil boilies and corn and pellet mixture. And it was that torrential the rain and uh, I struggled to find a, a clear spot, if I'm going to be honest. I searched for a good hour. And in this swim, it's quite obvious that people have fished close, relatively close, which isn't where I've been seeing the fish show. And anywhere at range where I had seen fish yesterday was just a, a, a sea of weed. I got a couple of small drops, but then when I tried to let the marker float up to check the depth and, and position to see if I've got enough room to get a, a, a couple of rods on it was just locking up solid so I couldn't get a clear you know area to fish properly in the end I decided uh, because I'd not tried the zigs at night and they're quite good at night I'd give it a go anyway long story short ever on the lakes not had anything last night and it's been quiet so I've only got the one bite yesterday morning at this time to show so what I've just done is rather than just leave the zigs in situ, I'd rather not do that because we've got quite a lot of undertow going on. There's a lot of weed drifting about and the last thing you want is a weed sat on your hook link on a zig. The other thing you get is a buildup of crap on your line. You get these minute dust particles. They'll come down and will coat your hook length and make it quite blatant and ruin the presentation. So I don't mind recasting very regularly with zigs because you're probing. It's not like you're fishing a baited area and uh, so I, I like to probe and check the swim out and I'm redoing them and I'm going to, as you can see, I've just foamed it up and put some fresh attractor on the hook baits, so on the foam. So I'm going to have a recast. We've seen three or four fish crashing at range, so I'm going to belt these out. I mean, there is, a, there is a distance limit on these swims, so, you know, you've got to be aware of that on these busy day ticket waters. But where the fish are showing at the moment, there's no one fishing and it's within my, just about within my bounds. Let's put it that way. So I'm going to uh, waz this, this out and see if we can catch one. There we go. I was just debating whether to bring, bring the rods in and do a bottom bait. I mean, mine was just in a blur because even though as long as I've been doing it, you can still get doubts. And then I thought, do you know what? With this sun out, I'm going to leave them. And then perhaps fish on the bottom just before darkness. And then I got a little couple of bleeps and I thought, yeah, that's a bite. And then there we are. The zigs worked. So I've just got to land this bugger now. That's the main thing. Ugh. That's on that same thing again. Do you know what? I normally take the rough with the smooth and Losing the odd fish on a zig is a bit of a, goes with the territory, but to lose two in a session, I'm absolutely gutted. And it didn't drop the lead as well, which is another, you know, I've got these clips that I just get off eBay and I get them off eBay for a reason. They're, they're quite inexpensive rubber clips. And the reason I use them is because they dump so easy. Some of the more expensive clips don't, don't dump lead and with a zig obviously the prerequisite is that the lead dumps that didn't dump the lead so I'm a bit gutted about that but I think it came towards me so I wound down and hit it and the rod collapsed over I could feel it kicking and then I thought I'd lost it and then I picked it up and that's obviously when I hit some weed and the hooks absolutely it's one of them corded cam curas. it's as sharp as you like I'm just going to show you the hook bait now so you can see what I was using. I was using one of them plastic balls from Enterprise on top of a piece of foam and the plastic balls have been soaked in a flavour that smells like 
uh, Jeff Kemp's evaporated milk and ice cream, which it was actually, that flavour. And I've had them soaking in it for uh, 11 years now, from when I had the bake company. And that's had both bites, so it looks a bit weird. A little ball on the top of the, the zig. Uh, so it's got the bites and, you know, there's, there's been probably two or three fish caught to quite a lot of guys. I've had two bites, but I've not landed them, so, I don't, you know, what can I do? I can't really be too disappointed that I'm doing things terribly wrong, but at the same time, losing two is just unforgivable. But it doesn't mean to say that I can't get another bite, so we'll carry on and see what happens. And uh, uh, bear with us, guys, because, you know, obviously I don't want these things to be about me blanking or having a cock up, but it's real. This is real. This is how it is. You know, we're all the same. You've got three rigs out on the end of your rods. You've not got any special rules or preferences. I don't like swims taped off for me or anything like that. This is real. Turned up, tried to find the fish. Uh, got it part right. We've just got to complete the next part of the jigsaw and get one on the bank. And uh, I hope you appreciate the fact that it's not contrived, this, and it's not you know, nothing that any of you guys couldn't do. Because at the end of the day, what I would like to think is that you're getting something from these films, and it is real, and I've not edited all the uh, disasters out or blanks or anything, just to make it look like a walk on water, because I don't. No matter how long you've been doing it, don't matter, you've got three rods out, two rods, you're the same as everyone else, same chances, and you've just got to try and make it work. So I've nearly done it but not quite, so uh, let's keep going. Hey guys, listen to this. I've been filming with Joe and we've had a right laugh uh, because part and parcel of these things that we do when we're doing the filming, it's it's not all about just getting down to business. We do have a laugh, you know. And we've just met for the first time and Joe just said, I just said to Joe, I've got my furry thing on. He says, I had to think about what you meant for a second. I thought, whatever does he mean? <laughs> so I've, I've used the zigs, I've left them out for 36 hours. I've had two bites. Uh, like a noddy, I've gone and lost both of them. It is just what it is. Uh, I do apologise for that. I've not got you a sort of lump to show you with giving the old, you know, cheese shot. I says, but I did try. Uh, the lake's not fished that well. We, it's one of them transitional times. I think there's been three fish out to all concerned. And all the lads are, you know, they're not mugs. They all know what they're up to, regulars and everything. Uh, I'm not a miracle worker, uh, unfortunately they fell off, so what, it happens, so we move on. So guess what, I was going to try and find a clear spot to, to fish uh, on the bottom. I've got a mega mix, I've got everything I'm confident in where I've been catching on my local waters and uh, anyway, uh, the ducks are at it over there, so sorry for that interlude. Uh, in case you hear some, you know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing a bit of a crazy thing. I like doing some crazy stuff now and again. You've probably gathered that. I'm not very conventional. I don't like doing it all to wraps and measuring it to the inch and, you know, looking like I've just come out of the Corder Academy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blast some bags of maggots out with a bunch of maggots and hopefully get some drops. And if I get one out of three, okay. These are an element of weed out there and it's chuck and chance, but what I'm seeing is the fish are out of normal range. I don't want to go and just put a load of bait in at sort of 50, 60 yards. It's just pointless. I'm just going to waste my time. I don't want to do that. I'd rather take my chances and actually fish to where I've seen some fish show. It's weedy out there. I can't get a good drop. Uh, I'm using heavy leads, I know that. The bag stuns on the entrance to the water. And guess what? Fish feed in weed. There's a bit of news for you.
they actually do fish in weed. They do find baits in weed. I found that left, right and centre. I normally use trilobes, but they won't enable me to get the distance I want. So guess what? I'm using fives. I'm going to blast them out there. The bags of maggot, you've seen what they like when they break down. It's more than enough for a bite. I'm going to stop them in the air before they hit the water. Uh, so the impact's going to be reduced. I'm going to feel them down and hopefully we'll have something to show you tomorrow. So it's a bit different, a bit unusual. That's what we're doing. So let's have a look how that one goes. Morning guys, uh, nearing the end of the session now. I've uh, got about a couple of hours left to go before my 48 hour challenge is up basically. And uh, sadly it hasn't gone as well as uh, I hoped. Uh, I, I tried the maggots last night, bags of maggots, blasted out to where I'd seen fish showing at long range. And it was torrential rain all night, it just didn't work. So I had to I uh, admit defeat this morning, so I've reverted to the to the zigs again. First light, I got up and uh, I've seen some fish showing beyond where I can fish to, really. So I changed it back to the zigs in the hope that I can try and snatch one before I go. But uh, still time yet, but it's probably fading, the chances of getting another one. So uh, I thought I'd like to just show you the way I use zigs. I do use zig liners sometimes, but for years I've used my own way of tying them and using them and I've caught quite a lot of fish on zigs. I've had 40s in the winter. Uh, I've had a lot of big fish abroad on them, including Rainbow. Uh, I don't think that anyone had ever used zigs on there before and me and my mate Guy Aitkins used them and uh, we had some really big fish in the swim that was otherwise you'd have thought had no fish in it. Uh, fishing on the bottom, as soon as we switched to the zigs, bang. So. Uh, yeah, I'll show you the way I do things. Uh, it, it may be of use to you. And uh, I've got the components here. The first thing I'd like to point out is an old mate of mine, Phil Davey, was an absolute maestro with Zigs. He put me onto this product. It's Stroft, it's called. This particular one is 6.4 kilos. So that's like 13, 14 pound breaking strain. It's really thin. It's invisible and strong as hell. And I've put a few really well-known anglers onto this that do a lot of zig fishing and they've said it's the best thing I've ever shown them. So you can get it on eBay. It's about seven quid a spool. It's made in Germany. And I can't tell you how good it is. You can see how much I've used. The spool's virtually depleted. You get it on 100 meter spools. There's two types. There's, there's one with the, the blue label and one with the brown. I favor the blue label particular batch and I've used it all over the place and it's been absolutely brilliant so it's really worth getting some of this. So I'll show you how I tie zigs. I do a small loop in the end of the nylon. Usually put it through twice. I try and keep this as small as I can. Because I want the knot inside the foam or the boiler or whatever I particularly want to use. So try and keep it really small. There we go. It's quite, quite a little loop. Just trim that off with the snippers. I have been using something that you might find interesting. I've had the, both the bites on this session on the zigs with I put these little enterprise plastic sort of eight mil balls. They like little boilies. They do some eight, uh, I think they're eight and 10 mil. I think the eight mil ones are hard to get now. Right, these are an old batch, a test batch. So I put those on. They've been soaked in that particular flavor, which is the old Jeff Kemp uh, evaporated milk and ice cream. Some of you might remember that from a long, long time ago. And I thought it was a fantastic flavour, it really lingers. You can wash your hands several times and you can still smell it, it's very creamy and 
just like ice cream smell really. Uh, so I've been fishing that that's been pre-soaked for years on top of the black foam. I've got the foam and I've trimmed it down with the snips to make it almost like to a point so it sits better. So I'll just whack that on the, uh, on the loop. And for some reason, I always like to use a yellow stop on top of the black. I know it's a small thing, but it's uh, just that little bit of colour. And quite often, you know, I'll use red or yellow or white tips on the, on the zig, on the foam. But the main body is usually always black. I know most people use it black, but it's with good reason it works. Right, and what I do, I won't use the full hook length on this, I'll just keep it shorter to uh, show you. Right, the, the, the hooks I'm using at the moment, strangely enough, I thought I'd got some size 8 Camcora chud hooks. They're my favoured hook for the sig fishing. I'd run out of them, so I've had to use the wide gapes. I mean, the wide gapes are great, but I, I like the reverse eye on the chuds because it hangs perfect when you have the, the foam up against the back of the shank. But I'll just show you with the, the wide gapes. Nothing too fancy, I just do uh, a knotless knot. I don't leave a gap, any kind of hair with this. You can see where I've trimmed it down. The hook sits against it, so I'll keep it really tight to it. And then, uh, maybe a bit there. One, two, three. I've gone round about ten times. Back through the eye, so it's facing forwards. There we go. So you can see the hook sat really tight to the, the foam. You could just use it like that, but you sometimes get it hanging slightly skew with. So what I like to do as the final piece is I get some clear shrink tube. Now I get this, this is the uh, 1.6 diameter and I get it from RS Supplies, you can get it from Tandy's. You get an absolute ton of it for, for fiver. So I don't like paying through the nostrils for a little packet of shrink tube. And I like the clear stuff for the zigs. So I'm going to chop off about I suppose about eight mil. And we're going to do an old liner liner. So put it down over the hook and I can put it almost up to the where the bait is touching the hook. And I don't just leave it at that, I get a baiting needle and opposite the point of the hook I make a small hole. So it really is a proper Liner, liner. A little bit fiddly, this. There we go. And then I boil some water, turn the kettle down as low as I can get. I have an open top kettle like this. Make sure there's no flames coming up the side of the kettle when you've it boiling, and I literally get it and put it in there for a couple of seconds and out. And that's enough to shrink it down. I don't want to put it in front of steam. Steam's far hotter than boiling water. It's superheated boiling water. And that can easily damage your hook length. So it's best to just put it straight in the boiling water and out. And you'll get that, that effect there. There's, there's one I did, just to show you the, how it shrinks down. And it always hangs true like that. It's really neat. And you know, you can, you can take the easy option and do the zig liners, but you're a little bit limited with the size of foam that you can use with those things. I like to use bigger pieces of foam sometimes. And he's a mate of mine, Lee Birch, he uses really, really, really big pieces of foam. And he catches more fish on zigs than anyone I know. Uh, and so don't be scared of trying some bigger pieces. And one of the other tips I'd give you is they always say that yellow and black in nature is to be avoided, like, you know, the wasps and hornets and bees. Well, I found quite the opposite with zigs. I, I'll often get a piece of black, a piece of white, just do it in slithers, and I make it, I call it my bumblebee. 
And I've used those to great effect so many times. And I remember I was fishing on uh, Swan on uh, Bluebell Lakes. And there was, the lake was really busy. And there was a young guy there and he came and see me. He said he'd never used zigs before. So I tied him up some of these bumblebee things. And he says, really, you do that? I says, yeah. So he tried them and he had Dave at 55 pound. And he had a couple of 40s on those exact yellow and black bumblebee sort of copies. So that's worth a try as well. So uh, yeah, the other thing I'd like to say is people can catch on unflavoured, but I use this pineapple goo, which uh, my mate Pete Holhouse put me onto. He, he used to be the coach of the England team. He reckons of all the flavours in with the goos, the pineapple is the best. I also like the old uh, Scopex. This is one of the Nash ones, Scopex number one. You can't really beat the old Scopex for attraction to fish. And what I'd do is just get a pot like that and leave the foam soaking in it. But I'd always check the buoyancy because sometimes if you use a very long hook length and you've soaked them for a long period of time and it's a small piece of foam, just check that the buoyancy's still there. Because obviously that's filling the void where the air's trapped. So always check your zig in the side or, you know, where appropriate and just to make sure you're fishing properly. But uh, yeah, the, the flavoured ones do work. The bite I got yesterday within 20 minutes was in this, soaked in this gear, the old Jeff Kemp's evaporated milk and ice cream. Very hard to get anyhow, but you know, it just shows that the flavoured ones, as opposed to the two rods with unflavoured, the flavoured one went straight away. Whether it was just coincidence or not, I don't know, but I've had another bite since and that was on the flavoured ones. So uh, yeah, worth a try. So I hope a few small tips like that are of use to you and uh, good luck with your uh, zig fishing. Well there we are, it's the end of the 48 hour session, uh, I've had a thoroughly good drowning. Just what you need when you're packing up, it's been torrential rain, the bib is absolutely saturated, all the gear is, I am. Well, I'm not, the waterproofs have done the job, but uh, yeah, I, I was hoping to snatch one at the end, but it's not worked, so. Losing two feels a bit of pill to swallow, really. Uh, but at least I had action, so uh, it's a small consolation, though. I wish I just could have landed one, but uh, next time I'll come again and have another go. And uh, it just shows, you know, it's these busy day ticket waters and turning up on a new place that you don't know. It's uh, not as easy as you think, you know. It's uh, some guy's been telling me that they've they've not had a bite for a good few months, as you know. So it's not 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 always uh, every throw of coconut, but uh, yeah, we'll try again next time. And uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you soon. And I hope you've had a few tips that are useful to you. That's the most important thing, I guess. So take care.